Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on enhancing soft skills and personality. We are on the last unit of the seventh week, unit 5, and this is lesson number 35. We just have 5 more lessons to go and one more week and the course is completed. Now, while completing this week, let us again uh, talk about a very interesting uh, discussion which I started in the last lecture. This is about managing love. So, before I uh, go into today's lecture, let us take a quick highlight of what I did it in the previous one. So, in the last lecture, we identified most of the qualities parameters for real love. In fact, if you really want to check whether uh, uh, some love is real, you can use uh, this as a kind of checklist parameters. So, the definition of love of showing great affection or liking for someone or something applies not only to romantic love between a man and a woman, but to all forms of love such as motherly love, fatherly love, brotherly love, sisterly love, man's love for animals, particularly pet animals, man's love for nature, etcetera. In the last uh, lesson, we understood that love is a combination of the following such as understanding, optimism, goodness, truth, faith, fairness, friendship, responsibility, caring, compassion, respect and surrender. Through a reading of excerpts from literature and philosophy, we identified the following traits as the hallmark of real love. So, we read from Shakespeare, we read from D. H. Lawrence, we read from Khalil Gibran and then uh, I am just going to sum up the essence of what uh, these poets and philosophers were trying to convey in the name of love. So, accordingly, love is doubtless, it is not fickle, it never alters or yields to temptations and better options, it is ever fixed like the lighthouse and is not affected by any turbulent situations. Love is timeless and withstands till the doomsday. Love is implicit, so you do not have to express through so many words and when someone is in love, their deeds speak more than their words. It grows in a free environment, it cannot be suffocated by bonds of agreements, you cannot enslave someone in the name of love, it will not remain pure love at least and it is pure emotion. The moment we let our mind and ego interfere in love, we make a mess of it. Love is freedom, love is unconditional and all encompassing. Love is patient and kind, it is neither envious nor boastful and proud. And if you really love someone, you will never be rude or angry and keep a record of mistakes. A person in love is truthful hopeful, trustworthy and persevering. So, this is what we learnt overall from all the important excerpts from literature and philosophy and this could offer you as a real checklist to identify whether you feel love that is real or whether someone is expressing which you can consider real. Now, having understood this part, Sometimes this emotion can go out of control, especially in professional environment. Now, let us see how we can uh, try to channelize this in a positive manner and some more thoughts on love and what is love and how do I look at love. To me, love is a great point of self-realization. So, when somebody is in love, he or she realizes that he or she is capable of being selfless. So, until that point, the person may be very highly selfish, egoistic, but when love strikes, suddenly the person realizes that she or he can be really selfless, egoless and is able to like someone better than herself or himself. So, this is a point of realization where one understands what is compassion, feeling for someone 
and gains empathy, understanding into the feelings of others. So, that uh, time of fixed mindset in which one was completely preoccupied with one's ego and self, slowly gives into one's understanding of how one can accommodate somebody else equally by relinquishing one's ego and one's selfish nature. And that point is a point of realization and it will take the person from one level to another level. Whether the person who made this one to realize that love stands with this person or disappears after some time. Sometimes the person disappears because the role of the person was to make this person realize, it was just to initiate and take this person to the other level. But unfortunately, love today has become a great source of misunderstanding. Many hate crimes are committed in the name of love. So, throwing acid on the face of the other, killing mercilessly and lot of atrocities committed in the name of love. And many at the other side end their lives in the name of love failure, so rejected love as if uh, there is nothing else to do in uh, life, so they just end their life. The truth is, if you gain a correct perspective of love, love never fails, it is the people who fail love. It is the people who do not let love develop in a matured manner, they fail it. True love makes a person succeed against all odds. It instills one the courage and indomitable will to overcome any obstacles. True love changes a person with a fixed mindset to growth mindset. How can you make the best of love? Life as I have been telling you is a long journey full of self realizations and various opportunities for growth. When you feel the love in whatever form it comes to you as a mother, as a wife, as a girl and contain it and keep that within you, it can do wonders for you. It can boost up your growth as an individual as well as as a socially responsible person. In fact, it is a real love that makes you understand that you are really responsible to the society, the environment, the people around you. This could be a good test for real love. Anything that is constructive and supports and or facilitates your growth is real love. Anything that is destructive and obstructs your growth is not real love. It could be a physical as well as an emotional blackmail covertly operated in the name of love. Now, having understood that the function of love is to liberate, uplift and elevate but never to pull you down or make you feel low or loathe yourself. Let us learn how to manage this emotion and not let it go out of control, especially in a professional environment. Now, before we actually go there, let us ask this question, since people are saying one suffered love failure, can there be failure in love? When people say love failure, they use it in a mundane sense of a person saying no to somebody's proposal to love or marry someone else. Practically, once a person has realized the potentiality of love, she or he never fails herself or himself. However, miscommunication is possible due to one's poor communication and soft skills. It has been explained before in the lectures on communication skills that for any emotional transaction, one has to choose the best psychological moment. Despite a man's good looks, intelligence, wealth and excellent character, a woman may not accept his proposal if it is given when she is emotionally preoccupied. For instance, so the boy proposes to the girl, but the girl is not able to say yes or no and then keeps uh, saying yes in abeyance, much to the heartbreak of the other person who misunderstands that maybe the girl is not really liking, 
But what was going in the mind of the girl at that moment was a suicide that happened at home, a suicide committed by her sister who got married to uh, another person and who were not approved by her father. So, they just committed uh, suicide together. So, this affected her uh, mind and then uh, she was completely preoccupied with this and that time the person went and proposed. Or look at another situation. So, the man is uh, suffering from a terminal illness and he was just reported that uh, he has only very few days to spend and that is the time the woman is uh, proposing or hinting that she would like to live with him forever. Now, the man if he is really in love with the other one, he will not be able to accept it because he knows that his days are numbered. So, these could be some emotional uh, situations where actually the people involved were preoccupied and they were not able to actually relate to the proposal that was given in reality. So, one has to be very careful and then choose a psychological moment, look at the body language to understand uh, whether the person is free, comfortable or whether the person is preoccupied and then uh, work accordingly. So, communicating love effectively will amount to looking at the body language and choosing this uh, psychological moment. So, it is important that love should be communicated clearly and effectively if one is all the way looking for just a yes or no. Here it is important to note the nonverbal communication of the person you are interested in before you expect a confirmation. Again if you go to the lectures on body language, you will understand what uh, are the symptoms by which a person is trying to express to you that the person is interested in you. Certain important factors such as direct eye contact, especially open eye contact okay, and then the eyes are completely open, relaxed to smile indicating that okay, I feel comfortable in your company, okay, I feel secured in your company, otherwise the smile will be controlled. Open palm gesture, so indicating I am frank and open, leaning towards the friend okay, and even mirroring the gestures, keeping the feet in front are all indicative of genuine interest. So, now when these symptoms are promising and if uh, you are able to gauge the mindset whether the person is preoccupied or open to receive what you are telling and then if you are able to put it in a proper manner, it will be very difficult for someone to reject it. Besides, Many relationships take time to grow. Often people make very premature attempts in uh, giving a proposal when the relationship has not undergone certain phases. Let us look at the normal phases in any relationship growth. So, there are phases involved such as meeting as strangers. The first time when you meet, you meet as strangers and then you familiarize yourself and then there is liking. Okay. So, we meet uh, so many people each day so, and some people you do not even want to talk, you do not want to register and then after saying hello you withdraw your hand and you stop the relationship there. But then in some case there is a liking and then interacting because you like you interact with the person and then there is a likeness to interact more this eventually develops into friendship and then slowly there is this sharing of common interests. Now, friendship sharing of common interest and then it slightly goes to the next level of exclusivity where sharing of secrets happen. So, things which are known only to the individuals are shared. So, this is the uh, level where slightly it is moving from friendship and then gaining Trust. But at the same time, conflicts and misunderstandings start creeping in in between. But slowly they also develop maturity in terms of resolving conflicts and misunderstandings. So, that is how it moves from one phase to another phase. 
and resolving these conflicts and clearing the misunderstandings help in building a high level of trust beyond any temporary conflicts. People in fact go through these conflicts and misunderstandings and they build up a very high level where the minor conflicts do nothing after that. So, this eventually makes them develop deep friendship and giving breathing space to each other. Remember the quote from Khalil Gibran like the pillars of a temple and then let seas pass through and then do not lean on each other and that is the phase they reach. And at this phase, they facilitate individual growth, okay. they support each other and then they uh, cherish in the success of others. There is no ego, there is no professional rivalry even if you are in the same one. So, they identify uh, one's success and failure in other and then they enjoy or suffer accordingly. And then together, they also realize that they are able to work better as a team. So, they help each other as individual and they learn that they can work better as a team. Now, this is the stage where it reaches a kind of matured uh, relationship. So, the moment two people realize that they can be fully independent and at the same time they can work as a team for the betterment, there is no need to declare love through those three words which have already become a cliche. I know of a couple who met in a hiking club and they have hiked to so many places together and in one of the hikes, the man asked the woman whether she would like to hike with him forever and obviously the woman said yes with a knowing smile. That was a wonderful way of uh, proposing and knowing for sure that uh, it is just only uh, verbally reinforcing what has been implicit for quite some time and even that was not necessary, they are going to do the same thing otherwise. There was no chance of getting rejected because the couple underwent all the phases of growth in a relationship. However, today where people get confirmations to stay together for a lifetime just by sending an SMS message from their mobile phones, many relationships do not go beyond the first conflict misunderstanding and many so called lovers meet and part as strangers and usually just by the pressing of a button. Okay. Tolerance level has gone down, no patience, impatience, irritability, mood swings. Now, these are all cannot be qualified under what we are trying to understand as a very pure emotional form love. And in such cases, people do not let relationships grow naturally. Owing to impatience, abortive attempts are made and love is blamed as the culprit. Now, how in case there is this so called love failure, how can you deal with that in a graceful manner? So, although I said there is no failure in real love, in case of rejections, one should learn how to deal with them in a graceful dignified and magnanimous manner. When somebody feels rejected, the immediate tendency is to badmouth the person who rejected. So, saying all bad things, abusing the person who rejected okay. or blame someone saying that, oh that person actually poisoned her mind, that person spoiled her or the circumstance for being influential in the rejection or blaming uh, things happened and that changed her mind or his mind. By blaming others, one refuses to take responsibility oneself. So, one is always in a denial mode, one keeps denying that there are some limitations in oneself also. However, rejections are times for rejoicing if a person takes full responsibility then she or he will introspect and internalize the limitations in that relationship. By letting oneself overcome those limitations, one prepares oneself for a better relationship in future. So, rejection should not be rejected, it should be rather embraced and accepted. And again remember the dictum, the best is yet to be. If one faces rejection, it implies that the choice may not be the best one and one has to prepare oneself for the best to come. Also, as the Dalai Lama says, remember 
that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. Although you will not realize this wisdom at the point of rejection, but in the long run when you connect the dots, Steve Jobs says, you will understand that you are really lucky not to get the one that you most wanted at one point in your life. So, immediately it will look like you are the unluckiest, but you will realize that you are really lucky not to get that uh, person. Bouncing back with renewed energy, laughing more, loving better and living a wonderful life is the best way to deal with rejection. And once you are overcoming this, there may be occasions again you will uh, uh, come across uh, this one. But I should uh, tell you that as a matter of fact, many who have rejected others have actually been living a regretful life for two reasons. So, it looks like to you maybe at that moment that someone who rejected your proposal may be living happily ever after, but many studies conducted indicate that as a matter of fact, most of the people who rejected others have actually been living in a regretful life for two reasons. One, sooner or later they realize their judgmental errors. They realize that they rejected the right person and they decided to live with the wrong person. And two, the meteoric rise of the people they rejected. Okay. So, they sometimes uh, people make mistake in underestimating the capability of the person who uh, gave this proposal. But after rejecting, they realize that the rejected people have risen in their life and career so high that if they had known this before, they would have said yes. So, many examples, but uh, I know uh, a girl was rejected for being fat. But she slimmed down and became a model and uh, became the envy of uh, so many of the uh, people. And then the boy who rejected regretted because she got much better offers than uh, the boy who rejected initially. And then I uh, also came to know of the story of a girl who uh, rejected, this is long before uh, going to US was very difficult who rejected a boy because the man that she was about to marry was going to US and he could also uh, take uh, her along with him. Now, eventually it happened that she did not get the visa or something at the last moment and she could not accompany her husband and he went alone and came back. But she came to know later through the friends that the man whom she rejected grew up in his uh, life and career and then got opportunity to go, to go to the US, settle, establish himself and became a US citizen and then he married and lived happily ever after there. So, th this uh, lady who rejected him never went to US also, but then regretted throughout her life for having rejected this person. If only she had this hindsight knowledge before, she could have married and perhaps she could have lived with him in the US forever also. But on the other hand, these are like ifs and uh, buts, these are just probabilities. Maybe this person also needed this experience to reach the other stage of growth in himself and then to reach another level. So, we can never say or uh, presume as how things could have happened. But these are just examples to indicate that uh, even the people who rejected others, uh, unlike what uh, the ones who got rejected think, were also not living a very happy life. They were also living a life of regret. And then as uh, John Steinbeck, famous American novelist mentions in his Steinbeck, a life in letters. He interestingly categorizes these two aspects of love as expressed by two kinds of people. So, let us look at what he says. He says, there are several kinds of love. One is selfish, mean, grasping, egotistical thing which uses love for self-importance. 
this is the ugly and crippling kind. So, this is the kind that will not let you grow, the destructive kind. The other is an outpouring of everything good in you. So, the other brings out the best in you, which even you have not realized before of kindness and consideration and respect not only the social respect of manners, but the great respect which is recognition of another person as unique and valuable. The first kind can make you sick and small and weak, but the second can release, can release in you strength and courage and goodness and even wisdom you did not know you had. So, when one fails in love, one need not uh, take it so seriously, rather one should fully use that as an opportunity for developing oneself to succeed in getting the best. Now, the most important part of uh, handling love, managing love, especially in professional environment, because we are talking about soft skills and I am running a, I am not running a course on uh, love or romance, but we need to know how it is related to your personality and uh, in terms of soft skills, how you should express this appropriately and how you should know to use it according to the decorum, especially in a professional environment. So, love can come to anyone, anytime, anywhere. One cannot really prevent it from happening in a professional environment. However, certain professional expectations are there from a student, an employee, who should never let love distract one focus from work or studies and fail to live up to the expectations of the organization. While some companies employ married couple to work in their office together. So, they believe that if they get both people who got married already, so it is easy uh, to get more work from them because they will be focused in their work and they do not get distracted in the name of love. But there are others who dissuade any love relationships within work environment and they do not believe in uh, keeping a couple in the same uh, office because they think that there will be vested interest and they will be spending so much time with each other and they will forget to do the work. So, that kind of thinking is also there. In inevitable case, when love occurs in school or college, office or any other professional environment, one should always function in a dignified manner and strictly follow the in-house norms and decorum. Misuse of any facility, violation of any norm in the name of love is unbecoming of a professional. Misuse in the name of love can only lead to humiliation and even loss of job or in case of students eviction from school or college. Examples, a male teacher sent a love letter to a female teacher through a student. So, this is in a school. So, the nervous student was intercepted by the director who fired off the male teacher immediately. So, the teacher lost the job. An employee sent in another organization an email proposal to his colleague. The manager displayed the email in the notice board, hiding the name of uh, the woman to whom it was addressed, facing humiliation because everybody looked at the email, they just laughed at uh, the way it was addressed. Some even laughed at the spelling mistakes and uh, silly grammatical errors. So, the man faced humiliation and he resigned from the job. So, even uh, nobody forced him, but uh, because he faced humiliation, he had to leave that. So, therefore, wise professionals keep their love interest out of work environment and focus on work at hand first and then give full time for love outside the business area. Now, if you ask uh, the question like uh, how can uh, true love can be kept in abeyance and then uh, love should be given uh, topmost priority and then you have to prove that you are in really love with the person by calling uh, the person 20 times or attending to the phone call all the time the person calls you should go back to a previous lesson and then uh, identify what is real love, because true love is patient. It understands work as the means of self-growth. So, it will not dissuade you 
or it will not distract you from your focus to your work. Hence, it waits and it will wait and supports instead of frequently disturbing and indulging in cheap tests. If where there is no trust, so then there is a phone call mail to check whether the person is there in the office or not. And when there is a, a lack of patience, every 10 minutes a call is mailed or all the time uh, messages are sent through uh, WhatsApp or Facebook and then checking all the time whether the person is online. But what happens is not letting the person focus completely on work and gain recognition for doing good work and use that for uh, promoting and uh, developing oneself. But all the time it is trying to make the person mediocre. So, this is the first kind of love that John Steinbeck was talking about. But the second kind will let the person work in the office peacefully, calmly and it stands by the person when the person is working there and then it supports where necessary and it never distracts. So, this is the kind that you need to develop whether even if you are still in the process of developing, you need to develop this kind of uh, trust, you need to develop this kind of understanding. If you develop, then it becomes so strong and then no storm or no turbulent weather can uh, disturb it and that will stay with you as a motivation to do anything whether it is work or enjoying life in any form, anywhere and all the time. Let us conclude uh, with a very wonderful quote from Bruce Lee and you will never expect this from the martial arts champion Bruce Lee. Here is a interesting quote where he talks about love. He says, love is like a friendship caught on fire. In the beginning a flame, very pretty, often hot and fierce, but still only light and flickering. So, beginning the growth phase, so I was saying that this is the time they try to understand each other. So, that time it is uh, friendship and light and flickering. As love grows older, so in my opinion when it reaches that matured final stage where you realize that teamwork is strengthening you for better, our hearts mature and our love becomes as goals deep burning and unquenchable. So, I wish you that you should reach this level of love and keep in your heart like this uh, fire burning as coals, deep burning and unquenchable. Unquenchable is nothing can stop it, nothing can destroy it. You cannot throw any water on it or put any sand on it to uh, stop the fire, it is unquenchable. So, the same books which I mentioned uh, last time. So, you can just go through the books to gain more understanding and perspective about uh, love. So, with this happy note of love, using that to grow and develop yourself, we are concluding this seventh week and almost like we are uh, completing the course, but for one week and five more uh, lectures. So, thank you so much for being with me for this wonderful journey and I have been enjoying this sharing my uh, thoughts and feelings with you and I hope you are also enjoying this and taking great benefit out of this. Thank you for watching this video, we will meet in the next lecture for the next week. Thanks again.